Crossroads. Each Crossroads story is based on the actual experiences of American clergymen, pastor, priest, or rabbi, the men who give inspiration and guidance to people at the crossroads of life. These dramatic stories are presented with the cooperation of our Board of Advisors, Captain Maurice M. Witherspoon, Father George B. Ford, and Dr. William F. Rosenblum. And now, for our story. Good evening, listeners. This is your newscaster, Dave Selden, reporting. Tonight, an editorial. Our town. We should all be mighty proud to know that this week we hit the national headlines. Three top magazines featured the name of our town. Only they called it the City of Corruption, the Modern Babylon, Crime Paradise. And they're right. Our Chamber of Commerce tells the world that we boast of 32,000 souls, finest parks and playgrounds. Last word in modern schools, churches of all denominations. But that's only a half-truth. It's a storybook picture, and it's a phony. Go down the street, sniff a little, turn the corner, and hold your nose for the garbage. Lift off almost any roof, and you'll find the sordid truth. Filth and corruption, moral and political. Gambling, numbers, narcotics. Name it, you can find it. This is our town. 32,000 souls and the highest crime rate in the state. When will the people have had their belly full? You think I'm exaggerating? Well, take a walk. Take a walk tonight. 4 a.m. if you like. The joints never close. Try any one of a dozen dives. Try the Golden Shoe over at Fulton and Maine. The Golden Shoe. Try that on for size. My husband, the big shot. Baby's out there freezing in a broken down car while he gambles our money away. Here's the picture I was telling you about. Good kid. And the man made his point for the fourth straight pass. Five passes. Eighty bucks rolling, but let me ask him for one thing for the baby and look what he gives me. He give it to me for our anniversary. Hold it. I'll be right back. Next roll is coming up. All right. And he rolls at nine. Nine's the point. All right, get your bets down before the next roll. How's about my 20 bucks, George? Would you go on home and take that kid with you? Get your bets down before the next roll. Get your bets down before the next yeah. roll. Yeah! George, huh? 20 bucks of that is mine, you promised. You get lost, hit the road before you change my luck. All right, come Place on. Your get your bets down. Who's playing the field? Uh, right here. Uh, yeah! And natural. Once our town bought Chicago. For my own part, I'm sick unto death of three times a year Christians so-called Christians who on Palm Sunday and Easter and Christmas remember God's word. But 362 days of the year tolerate or live with or practice drunkenness, gambling, vice, and murder. Mind you, I'm not criticizing your sermon, Bob. It was wonderful, forceful, moving, true. Only... Only you wish I hadn't said it. 
you being director of public safety. I wonder whether the pulpit was the place to say it. Your life's work is God's work. I wonder if perhaps you oughtn't to stay with God's work. What is God's work, Commissioner? Is the line drawn at the door of the church, or is it the sidewalks outside of the dens of iniquity? I wonder if you know what you're up against. Voices have been raised in the past against vice, graft, gambling. They merely moved a few locks and went on operating. For a month, our jails were crowded. And then the good citizens, the good ones, mind you, hollered about taxes because it costs money to keep people in jail. Oh, but surely... Just let me finish. A few years ago, before you came to us, we had our last reform wave. Where there were 21 gambling houses wide open, they were consolidated into 11. Slot machines disappeared for a month. And then back bigger and better than ever. And one dog track closed for all of one week. But there are laws. There are men like you. Do you know what it takes to move people? Move them from inertia, from entrenched privilege and entrenched crime? You trying to tell me that my sermon wasn't moving enough? Not my point at all, Reverend. There are two answers, I think. Yours and mine. Mine is the work I've done all my life. Hard, brutal, violent sometimes. Yours, I think. And I'm not a scripture-quoting man. But I think the best is the soft answer. For the soft answer turneth away wrath. I'll promise to keep out of the pulpit if you'll keep out of the police department. Oh, Kathy, you know Mr. Ridge, our director of public safety? Oh, yes. How do you do, Mr. Ridge? How do you do, Mrs. Russell? Oh, excuse me. Reverend Russell. Oh, just a minute. It's for you. Mr. Ridge. Where? Oh, no. I'll be right over. Another tragedy? I want you to tell me in your own words about Herbie finding your mother lying in the street and about the men running away. My mother said she was going to the store and could she have some money? So I gave her my pay, except for two dollars. So all she had was about nine. Well, when she didn't come back in an hour, I knew something was wrong. Who actually told you, George? My kid brother, Herbie, he found her where she'd been hit, where she was laying. When Herbie came in carrying it in his hand, I knew she was dead. Carrying what, Joy? She bought that for the baby, huh? Yes, sir. I guess she bought it for the baby. How many of you are there? Six. Marion and me and Herbie, we're the only ones who know. The little ones are asleep. Mister, don't they know who did it? Who'd do a thing like that? What kind of a guy would kill my ma with a blackjack for nine bucks? What are we gonna do? My name is Reverend Robert Russell, Mr. Selden. Yes, Reverend. Would you care to tell me your answer to the boy's question? Yes, I'd like to, with illustrations. What are you doing tonight? You know what they say about this city? I can imagine. No. They say every night is Saturday night, and every Saturday night is New Year's Eve. Won't you come in for a while? Maybe we can work out a solution to this problem. Oh, thank you, no. You see, you're young, you're an idealist, and in a sense, you're new to this world that I've been showing you. So I don't expect it. You know, I took another minister for a tour of our fair city. What happened to him? He was transferred to North Dakota. Why? No, I... I guess it was because he wasn't paid to 
to stir up a big noise. Some people are, like me. And some people, I hope this doesn't hit you too hard, Reverend, but some people are paid to mouth platitudes. Well, I'll see you. Wait. You're a man of the world. One voice raised against evil, mine or anybody else's, is that good? Yes. Well, what if a dozen voices were raised? A score of voices, hundreds of voices, speaking the same truth at the same time in the house of God? I don't know. But that other minister, the one who ended up in North Dakota, he left here by request. Good night. There's a wind blowing through our town tonight. Perhaps not yet a searching wind, but a clean, cool wind. And it's sweeping through the streets and the front yards. And it's stirring up the rubbish in the back alleys. And it comes from church and synagogue. The rabbi's text is Isaiah. Justice is turned back and righteousness stands afar off. For truth has fallen in the public squares and righteousness cannot enter. In our town, once the city of churches, for the first time, simultaneous sermons are being spoken by 11 men in black. And they're saying, as with one voice, that those in public office who dishonor their oaths, dishonor their city. And they're telling their congregations that what these corrupt politicians fear most is what they're witnessing today, this Sunday, an aroused public. We must go to the roots, and that, my friends, is vested interest. There are those who grow fat and sleek off evil. For the shutters do not hide shame. They cover investment. And the slot machines are a source not only of corruption, but of profit. And partner to it all is the silence, the inertia, the indifference of all of us. The salvation of a community is the watchfulness of its citizens. And I think it might be said, good friends, that a campaign is underway, an extermination campaign, rat extermination. <laughs> yes, Mr. Bergen. Yes, of course I heard you. And I understand your point of view as a banker. I tell you, this meddling in politics has got to stop. I've been on the phone all week long. The parish projects are suffering because of this. The majority of the congregation is with us heart and soul. And how do you think I can guarantee a loan at this point? Let's have no sermons about the marketplace and money changers. There's enough trouble in the world without your picking on your own city. Mr. Bergen, as long as I am pastor here, I'll choose my own sermons. If the shoe pinches, I'd suggest trying a new pair. You're being paid to dispense religion, not reform. Is that clearly understood, Mr. Russell? What's the alternative, sir? A transfer to North Dakota? Kathy. Kathy, what is it? Oh, Bob, it was horrible. Unspeakable. What happened? What happened? Those men. They followed me. They came up to me in the street. But they'd been following me for days. I didn't want to worry you. I didn't want to tell you. Oh. Hello? Who is it? If you Bible busters know what's good for you and your families, you'll lay off while you still can. Who is this? I can't. Different voice, same thing. Who is this calling? Or are you afraid to tell me your name? You're the one who better be afraid. Ask Selden. You're next. Selden. Ask Selden, he said. I wonder if anything could have happened to Dave Selden. I tell you, they ran this car right off the road, officer. I saw the whole thing. We were coming in the opposite direction, and just as we rounded the curve, a big black car deliberately forced this car over the embankment. They nearly ran us down trying to get away. I wish you wouldn't go out, Bob. It's almost four o'clock. But I've got to find out about Selden. They just brought him into the hospital. That man on the phone, he said you were next. Don't you worry. They've done their good deed for the day. I'll be back for breakfast.
behalf of the Reverends Roberts, Darwell, McGregor, Alden, Farrenkopf, and others, we respectfully address the City Council and its chairman, the Honorable Justice Thomas Deal, and petition the City Council to wipe out the evil and corruption that befoul our city. It is evident that the Director of Public Safety and the Chief of Police are either unable or afraid to correct this evil. We propose, therefore, that we, the undersigned, be appointed special policemen. We will act as an independent vice squad and bring to book the gamblers, the hoodlums, and the vice operators. We declare that we would be unwilling, however, to serve under any of the present so-called enforcement officials of our city. Instead, we ask to serve directly under the Honorable Thomas Deal, chairman of our city council and be empowered to recruit World War II veterans of honesty and integrity to serve with us. Well, they tell me you had quite a turnout at the Legion. Yeah. I used to be in the service. Yeah, what else? Shipyards. That figures. They tell me the psalm singers are trying to make a bunch of carry nations out of you boys. Huh. GIs closing up saloons and gambling places. That's really something, ain't it? It's a good idea if you ask me. This town isn't safe for your wife and kids. Is that the way you feel about it? That's just the way I feel about it. What are you doing down here, slumming? No, we just came in to look the joint over before we closed it up. Today, the new grand jury is attempting to learn the real owners of properties used for unlawful enterprises. An official of the License Bureau is now on the stand. In order to close the establishment in question, we had to serve a summons on the owners. Now, you realize that, sir. Proceed, please. Uh, yes, sir. Well, we carried a title search in order to find the owner. It was part of the estate of uh, Mrs. I.J. Trenton. Well, Mrs. Trenton is in England. The lawyers there never wrote back about it, so we weren't even able to get the owner served. And we couldn't serve subpoenas, you see. Well, you see, our hands were tied, sir. What about the other properties in question? We weren't able to locate the proper owners in a single case. It was, it was really trying, sir. Next witness. Do you wish to say something, Reverend Russell? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, the witness must be sworn. Mr. Ridge. I have already sworn my life to the truth. And what I have to say takes only two words. Two terrible words, openly violating the Lord's commandment. False witness. Orderly procedure, Your Honor. Mr. Ridge, the procedure in the special investigation of the grand jury is flexible. I want to hear the Reverend Russell. Your Honor, this jury is chosen by honest men. But this jury itself is corrupt because corruption has reached into the highest places. It has touched my own friends. I speak their names. Mr. Bergen, Commissioner Matt Ridge, and the members of the city council who sit in the front row of our jury box judging, if you please, their own corruption. This witness. Where does he work? City Hall. What does he earn? a modest salary. Where is his home? On the hill, a mansion. Who makes up the difference? Where does it come from? Whose blood is on the money? Your Honor, we have been doing some investigating too, and I tell you, I must protest. If you have more to say, Reverend Russell, say it. I say only one thing, sir. If we truly mean to clean our city, let us begin in this room. Your Honor, Your Honor. Mr. Ridge. I think it's about time we had our say. Let us ask Reverend Russell and the other ministers where their funds come from. If there is one among them who can say his church has not accepted money, not merely from men like myself, whom they now accuse of corruption, but from the proprietor of the golden shoe, and the owner of the big casino down at the waterfront. If there is one of them who can prove to me that his Sunday collection plate has not held some percentage of gambling winnings and track profits, then I'll resign. 
But I would also like to ask Reverend Russell if he would like to continue his courtroom sermon on my text. Let him who is without sin in this room cast the first stone. You are right, Mr. Ridge. I am corrupted too. It has touched us all. If a tree feed from a cesspool, the fruit must be foul. I can only say with St. Matthew, either make the tree good and the fruit good, or cut it down where it stands. This man speaks for me, and I believe he speaks for most of us in this room. By the powers invested in me as chairman of this grand jury investigation, I now dissolve it. I hereby order a new grand jury to be chosen and appoint as its foreman the Reverend Robert Russell. Eleven men in black went into action. Armed with special writs by the new grand jury, the Crusaders set forth. One of their first stops was the Golden Shoe, where they slapped a subpoena on the proprietor and went to work on the gambling equipment. The Golden Shoe won't be open for business for a long, long time. Bookie joints had a tough day, and for once, the customers broke even. In the city hall, an official of the License Bureau violated a long-established custom. He told the truth and named the real owners of the dens of vice. They no longer operate. XGIs joined the police and wrecked the dive where one of their buddies had been brutally beaten a short time ago. The raids swept across town like a holocaust, and the hardware stores report a shortage of padlocks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dave Selton speaking. This is my first broadcast since, shall we say, my accident. I wanted the Reverend Russell to take over my broadcast tonight, but as we all know, he's a very busy man. Nevertheless, by recording, here is the Reverend Robert Russell. We are at the most dangerous moment of our campaign, the moment that evil has been waiting for right now. For they will sit this war out, hoping we will grow bored and tired and indifferent again, so that they can move back and take over again. We must pray. We must also do. We must work with our hands, with our lives. We must believe, but we must also do. And they're going to do. These clergymen will be the watchdogs of our future, watchdogs with teeth because an amazing thing has come to pass. They've combed the 2,000 odd pages of the state code and they found a law once directed against horse thieves. This law allows that any 15 men of proven good character may organize a corporation to arrest and convict lawbreakers with the powers of deputy sheriffs. May arrest and search and in their discretion bear arms. I think we're all going to sleep a little bit better tonight. The air is cleaner. And the people, including this reporter, can be thankful and just a little proud that our town has recovered its good name, the City of Churches. Bear on. You, Bob. Well, why not? My great-grandfather, the Reverend Phineas Russell of San Francisco, fought with the vigilantes. However, let us pray, God, that I may never have to use it. You know, it's a lovely evening. It's been so long since we just went for a walk. Get your hat and coat, darling. We're going for a walk without fear. <laughs> 